turn that down some. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, we are gathered here today for my review of G Stats ATL Hustle, episode four. Um, it's titled "On That Note." Um, the episode came out kind of late. I'm sorry, I had to do tattoo, and it's just like crazy. Um, this episode came out at like four in the morning, and uh, while I was asleep, Jesus, and uh, so this what should have been done last night is now being done this evening. So we're gonna get into it and uh, get in and get out. So um, they do a recap of what we saw last time. And of course, they revisited the argument with um, with uh, Melangeda and Akeem, and Akeem, of course, saying a bunch of crazy stuff to Melangeda that don't make no damn sense, and I don't understand. He said some very uh, like like crazy things. Just didn't didn't make any sense. So um, we pick back up where we left off and um Sherrod and Zafar and Delicious um are sitting down and what they're actually doing is actually practice rehearsing for lit season two. I'm assuming that may be another web series on YouTube. I don't know. I'm gonna just do I'm gonna have to ask my good sister Google um and find it and I may catch up on it and possibly review season two when it comes out. I don't know. We'll see. So Corday. This should have been Corday's called Corday's episode or uh, the truth about Corday or something or Ayala come talk to Corday or something. I don't know because he was just doing the absolute most with the absolute least on this episode. So, Tramiel and Corday meet for dinner. Um, Tr Tramiel is really trying to mend the situation that happened between Melangeda and uh, Corday at the karaoke event, where once again, um, Corday was super rude and super shady and he feel like um, that uh, that uh, Melange is being extreme and his fashion is costumey and it's just mm, more and more ways of saying that he thinks that Milan Jada is fake. And so he has all these shady things to say. And so Tramiel is like, well, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to um, see what the disconnect is between Corday and Milan Jada. And Corday just does nothing but throw, continue to throw shade and, and talk down about Melange And he throws some shots at Sherrod as well. Um, he, like he called his Melange for plastic. He called it porcupine. Um, he doesn't seem to understand where he was wrong in the situation when he interrupted Milan when Milan was get, like, explaining that he was going to be in fact walking in Fashion Week for the first time, and he I, he just doesn't see how him interrupting to promote his Valentine's Day event was rude. And uncalled for and unnecessary. So, um, at that point, Corday says he got a new job. 
um, this is his nine to five in addition to the Corday Creatives, his own business where he consults and things. Um, so we then, um, he also said they have a conversation about, um, his EP, I guess, or his out or his P put out a project is what he said. And he said it dealt with depression and suicidal thoughts and things of that nature. Um, and though that's that's amazing and it's great and all that good stuff, but it's kind of hard to feel any sort of sympathy after someone has been blatantly rude and disrespectful. Like, you can't crap shit on somebody and then be like... Oh, feel sorry for me. Because we don't. And we're not going to. And you can't make us. Um, so. Charlie and Corday have their studio date. So. This is where. I feel like the producers were being shady. Because Charlie comes in. And he says. I, I'm going to see how. Um. Corday sounds because Corday was giving Melanjada so much fever at the karaoke event but you didn't sing at all at the event so when he comes in you hear it sounds like somebody's singing this beautiful song and da 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 that's not Corday baby that's not Corday singing when they finally do pull back to hear Corday's vocals He chose to sing in all of Alicia's keys. I don't, <laughs> like, I was legit like, this is your note, you are here. That That's what all of that was giving me. That pitch was all over the place. It was on the roof. It was in the basement. It was in the kitchen. It was in the backyard. Everywhere except where we needed it to be. <laughs> oh my god. So Corday tried to throw his best player from the Himalayas lines at Charlie. And Charlie was deflecting them like he was Wonder Woman with his cuffs. Ka ching, ka ching, ka ching, ka ching. No, nah, nigga, we not doing that. That's that's not how that works. He brought him some roses, which was cute. And then asked him to be on his team. He was trying to throw a player, player. You know, hey teammate, hey, get on my team of hoes, get on the roster type of situation. And Charlie was like, well, why would I, what are your intentions? Why would I want to be on your team? And when he, because I don't even like we just met. I don't even know you like that now. You want me to be on your team when your cheerleaders are that don't even No. No. And I'm so glad that Charlie wasn't here for the bullshit. Um <laughs> I actually put Corday's line of bullshit falls apart with ask actual questions. Y'all, I'm tired. Um, he, like, I don't understand. Y'all should, should read my notes. They're stupid as hell. It says Corday wants Charlie on his team. Gives him some flowers. But when Charlie asks him, ask him his attentions, dot, 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 crickets. And it wasn't even really crickets. It was just a bullshit answer that Charlie immediately shot down. It was like, no, sir, that's not how, that's not, I don't know who you've been dealing with in the past, but that's not how this works. That's not, that's not how it goes. That's not what we're going to do today. Um, I'm trying to have sugar daddies and financiers and supporters, sir. I don't need a boyfriend. Or to be on your team of hoes, nigga, no. 
I am the treasure to be found. What are you talking about? I'm the pink starburst, bitch. No. So, uh, we jump again to Sherrod, who made an asinine statement about people mad that he did porn. Because he did porn, because he's cute. And if he had been ugly, nobody cares. No, I think you'd have got the same. I don't care if he was ugly or cute. You'd probably got the same. You'd have got the same reaction, but you'd have got the same reaction about this whole porn situation. Um, so, we move, but he did book a job, and he, they did, um, show some of it being filmed, so he is moving forward in the direction of moving away from porn into doing more mainstream, um, can't work, um, and jobs and acting jobs and things of that nature. So we jump to, we hop, skip, and jump to this Valentine's Day event. Of course, Milan Jadon's not there because it is fashion week and he is walking in fashion, a fashion show. So Adrian goes, Tremel, Akeem shows up, True Fine showed up. Walked in, said, child, I don't have time. This is this is the bullshit. And walked, literally said, child, the ghetto, who child, the ghetto, and walked out. Um, again, true fine. This is, does not help in your plight to be well received on this show. Because... This, um, I'm better than everyone, and you're just a walking contradiction. Like, have the stuff you say out your mouth, you say one thing, but then your actions say something else. So, uh, why are you here? That's my question. If you're so above it all, why why are you even here? So, we're at um, Corday's event. And shout out to Carrie D. Who they showed actually singing and being able to carry a note. We appreciate you. And, uh... The music soul child. Don't never do you wrong. Um, so, Akeem is loud and extra for no reason. Like, why everybody gotta be bitches and hoes? Like, that's my question. Like, you said, I'm gonna come up in here and school these young dumb bitches and these hoes and I'm looking at you out of my third eye and... You're just doing a lot for just no just no reason at all. This is not necessary and it's uncalled for. Tremel said Akeem got a demon on his back and I am not sure that I, I'm not sure that I don't agree. I'm not sure that I do not agree with that assessment. There's something going on. I am waiting with bated breath for Mike and Ty to do an interview with Akeem. We got questions because none of this makes it. Is this an act? Are you mentally challenged? What's happening? What's going on? I don't understand. Um, now, Corday said when he got up on that stage, he said he wanted to do covers for his performance that evening. Because he had put out an EP and the time had come and passed for him to be performing that music. Which doesn't make any sense. Because you were just promoting this lovely album um, at the beginning of this episode. Uh, talk about now on iTunes and everything. But if you promote this project of yours, why... I would have at least 
done. One song from said album. Give the people a taste of what the album is like so that would entice them to purchase. But far be it from me, who is me to judge, what do I know? Um, also, probably because his album was done in a studio and the fancy buttons to make him on pitch, probably not there at the karaoke of it. You know, okay, sure. Um, now, there was some confusion because, okay, so Akeem said that Corday slid in his DMs and invited him to the, and told him that the event was happening and invited him to the, to the event. Corday raggedy behind get up there and say, I don't know who, who invited Akeem. Who told the, who gave Akeem the memo about the event? I don't even know who to believe. Because Akeem, 90% of the time, is talking out the side of his neck. And you, Corday, apparently are in everybody's DM. So you may be confused about who you told what to begin with in the first place. But I, or this, I don't know. I digress. So, I appreciate Adrian and Tramiel trying to be a good friend and being politically correct when it comes to Critiquing the performance that Corday Corday gave, Akeem, however, took a truth serum, and he didn't get the memo about being nice. So he just told, said he was like, "I went in there and that before he got up there and started to perform, and I was like, no. I also was like, mm -mm, this ain't it, but uh." uh yeah, that I give a key. I that's one point for a key. He did tell the truth. The, the it wasn't good. So, but this is when a key lost me again. He says, and I quote, You can't get up there and sing my favorite Prince song when doves cry and mess it out. No, he said he did good singing his favorite song, Prince song when doves cry. Here's our only issue, Akeem. He wasn't singing when doves cry. He was singing the beautiful ones. And he was not doing a good job. In fact, he was doing a terrible job. He messed up Prince. So that's one of my favorite Prince songs is the beautiful ones. The beautiful ones always smash the bitch. Like, I, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't... Like, that's my child. My sister had... A purple rain poster above her bed in our bedroom. Like, Prince's music was on repeat all the time. So, I know the beautiful ones are what it's supposed to sound like. And your falsetto wasn't nowhere near. Mm -mm, it wasn't. Mm -mm. And them dry claps you get at the end of your performance. If that didn't tell you it wasn't good, I don't know what was going to, darling. I'm so, Charlie, even though Corday invited Charlie to this um, new New Year's Eve, ugh, almost said family dollar event. That's not what I'm trying to say. Valentine's Day. He invited him to his this Valentine's Day performance. Charlie actually got booked to perform somewhere else. And he got up there and he did his thing and he, and he sounded just like his record and he was getting it in and bebop and I did a little twerk to it. How, how you gonna how you gonna walk when you not that rich? Try again, try again. Cool, watch on my wrist. Okay, I'm not even gonna go in there to that. Um, but he seemed to do really well on his performance. Now. After the performance, all everybody goes outside to, you know, like, he's like, he, like, I want them to critique me because, um, 
like my performance and what happened and, you know everybody was congratulating him and giving him accolades and stuff of course um Akeem starts in with Tremel throwing shade and of course uh, and he didn't speak to it but then because Corday is messy and he don't like Milan when he keys into the fact that Akeem and Milan don't get to get like each other either oh he all about whatever Akeem got to say at that point Okay. All the what? Twenty minutes. Shut your mouth. All right. So at this point, Adrian gets Akeem right together and was like, "You was disrespectful, and you owe that boy an apology. You owe Milan an apology." Akeem and Adrian get into it. Adrian says to him, look, I done told you we're not going to do this. I'm not the one for your bull. Stop playing these games. Leave me alone. Of course, Akeem is not going to leave him alone. He continues to follow him. He was like, no, stop it. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. He continues to egg him on. He then pushes Adrian. And that's where it cuts off. Now, next week, it's going to be an episode. It's the mid-season recap, deleted scenes, and a uh, trailer, a super trailer for the rest of the season. Apparently, there's ten episodes, well, nine episodes, because one is a recap and mid-season trailer. Unless you count, if they going to do that episode which will be episode number five if they do five more episodes and the reunion then you'll still have ten actual episodes if that's how we're counting them because I won't count I don't count this next episode if they're not continuing the story we're just getting caught up deleted scenes gag reels all that good stuff and um um, and the trailer for the rest of the season, then I wouldn't count that as, as an episode. So, um, we shall see what happens because I'm praying that Adrian gave his ass the business. I'm praying he hauled off and punched him in his face, something, anything. Because I'm sick of a king. I'm sick of him. I don't understand. You always talking crazy out the side of your neck. I saw this interview where they said you were sober, you were still, you were still incoherent, sober. So, that's not the issue. This is just who you are as a person, and I am confused by it. But, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out why. I got questions. Corday, why do you think you're the end all be all? And you just accusing people of stuff that you're doing. You don't accuse Milan Shada of trying to make everything about him, but you were at his event while he was in the middle of an announcement about him walking in to for the first time in New York. Fashion week and then you decided to make it all about you and your performance on Valentine's Day. But Milan Shada is always trying to make it about him. You, you don't make don't make dollars. It don't make sense. Boo. I don't understand. I just really don't. But that's all I got for this evening. I know Chase in Dallas should have a new episode out on Wednesday. And I will do a review for that as well. Um, yeah. I think that's all I got for this evening, and uh, I will see y'all in the next one. Y'all have a good evening.